Hey guys, and welcome back to Professor Layton and the Curious Village. Our story so far. Layton and Luke narrowly escaped the crash of a runaway ferris wheel while searching the park. The ferris wheel destroys an old shack on the shore, revealing a secret subterranean path. After finding a tower-shaped key in the underground room, Leighton and Luke make their way back to town. With the key in hand, Leighton debates heading to the tower. However, after sensing a sinister presence near them, the professor devises a plan to out the fiend. So I believe we're heading back to the inn, but let's see if these guys have more puzzles. Percy didn't have one. And that guy didn't have one. Um, which one's the in? Not this one. Any puzzles in here? No. Where would they be? No, this is also not the end. I thought it was. If you wish to stay in St. Mystia, I strongly advise that you butter me up by solving this puzzle. Kind of missed what he said at the start there because I didn't think he was going to give me a puzzle. How many squares? Okay. This board has 12 dots on it. Your task is to connect these dots to form as many squares as possible. You can use each dot multiple times. And you can orient the squares however you wish to fit them on the board. However, to be counted as a square, each corner must be on a dot. How many different squares can be drawn on the board? Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nine. Um. That's gonna be it, can't it? Doesn't have to mean eight, nine. I feel like it's probably just nine. You can use a given dot as many times as you like and can orient the squares however you need. You're going to reuse dots and you should be on the lookout for a few diagonally oriented squares. Yeah, got them, I think. Mm -mm. I'm trying to go for like a big square, but that's not gonna work. And then I was trying to go for like this kind of thing, but it doesn't work either. I think it's just nine. There are three different sizes of squares. Oh, okay. That you can make on the board. Okay, so I'm missing one somewhere. Because I've got one, two, three, four, five, and... So nine, and then I'm missing one type of square. But how? Hmm. Oh, there it is. Say so ten. Oh wait, hang on, go back. Is 
that the only way that can go? No, there's one there. Mm -mm. Eleven. That was close. Let's go 11. Nailed it. Did you have a hard time finding the two bigger squares? Yeah, I did actually. Ah, yes, that's the answer. Very well then, I approve your application to visit St. Mysteria. But when you have finished your business here, I strongly advise you to leave town. Gramophone. Probably Leighton. Um, right, so the inn wasn't where I thought it was. Where's the inn? the big building that says in. Hello, Professor. Is something the matter? You look a little shaken. Beatrice, I have an urgent request. Could you show me the newspapers from the last couple of days? The papers? Certainly. Hang on for just a moment while I go fetch them for you. That's strange. I'm sure I set them down around here somewhere. Is there a problem? I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I can't seem to find them anywhere. Even today's morning paper seems to have gone missing. Hmm. I see. Well, thank you just the same, Beatrice. This has been most helpful. Just what was in those papers anyway, Professor? Yoo-hoo, Professor Layton. Ramon, and to what do we owe this visit? Oh, he told me I needed to find you and bring you to Reinhold Manor. The inspector, I mean. Hoo-hoo-hoo. He and Lady Dahlia await your arrival at Reinhold Manor. Thank you for the message. We will set out for the manor in just a few moments. So now we've got to go to the manor. You found the key to the tower, haven't you? How do you know about the key? You mustn't interfere with the tower. Whatever you do, just stay away from there. Interfere? What do you mean by that, dear? Does this cool cat have a puzzle for us? Lady Dahlia sure is gorgeous, ain't she? Yep, sure is. What a dish, what a doll, what a honey. Gals like that are pretty rare, I tell ya. Yep, yep. Good talk, Marco, as usual. Just so productive. Ahu, if it isn't Professor Layton. Judging by your expression, it seems you haven't found the golden apple. You look terribly tense, Professor. Perhaps this small puzzle will help Ahu -hu loosen you up. Ninety-three over the river. Oh, I love these ones. Yes. Yeah, I know how to play. Go away. Help Stachen Scarfen <laughs> move the wolf, sheep, and cabbage from one side of the river to the other while obeying the following rules. In addition to its captain, the raft can only support one animal or item at once. 
when Stash and Scarfin isn't near, the wolf will eat the sheep and you'll have to start over. The sheep will eat the cabbage when Stash and Scarfin isn't around. If you let the sheep have its way, you'll have to start over. You can shuttle the raft back and forth as many times as you like, but the shorter solution takes seven moves. Um, sheep first. Then, uh, wolf. How do I go over here? Probably should have read the instructions. Cabbage. Sheep. I've done many a river puzzle in my day. Ain't no fool in me. I got the shortest route. Excellent. That was masterful, but I expect nothing less from the great Professor Layton. Oh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Hey, that's my last painting scrap. Heck yeah. Definitely getting near the end of the game then, I guess. This painting is truly brilliant. It simply must go on my wall. By the way, Luke, I have a present for you to mark this occasion. Turn off your Nintendo DS once, then restart the game. At the title screen, select bonuses, and you should have a new challenge from me. Now I know you're excited about your present, but be sure to save before you restart your DS. Can you not break the, uh, the fourth wall, please? That's rather uncomfortable. The art lover's house has been added to your map. Cool. Shan't be doing that, but thanks anyway. Welcome back, Professor Layton. Please come in. Everyone is waiting. Thank you, Matthew. Is something troubling you, my good man? You seem ill at ease. Uh, no, I'm fine, sir. Please make your way to the parlour. Alright, if you're certain that nothing is the matter, we'll head upstairs. He's lying. Ah, Mr. Layton, thank you for arriving so promptly. Come, have a seat. Why have you called us here, Inspector Chelmy? Like you, I'm not the kind of man who beats around the bush, so I'll just come out with it. I'm on to you, Leighton. It's as clear as day. You are responsible for Simon's death. Are you suggesting I murdered Simon? Again, with that uh, creepy grin on his face. Nonsense. <laughs> nice, Leighton. I have to admire the way you keep cool under pressure. But of course, I would expect nothing less from a cold-blooded killer such as yourself. I don't suppose you've seen this before, eh? Now this vase was on display in the room in which Simon was found dead. All the forensic evidence I've gathered suggests that the killer struck Simon with his vase. Our killer was no professional. You see, he left his fingerprints all over the murder weapon. Fingerprints that match your own, Mr. Layton. Oh, that's the vase from the market, isn't it? You rotten murderer. If this vase is evidence, why did you just break it like it was nothing? So go on and give me an alibi, Layton. Where were you when Simon was killed, eh? Come on, out with it. I was with Luke, investigating matters down in the village. Hmm. Is that the best you can muster? It's clear the little brat is an accomplice to your crime. Admit it, Leighton. You two wanted to keep the golden apple so badly that you conspired to murder Simon. You can't fool me, Leighton, so cough it up and start talking. While I'm at it, I'll take the key to the tower you picked up, too. It seems that you are intent on pinning this crime on me, Inspector. 
but if you are a true enforcer of the law, you'll acknowledge that I'm not the only reasonable suspect. Any member of this household could have committed the crime. In fact, you can't even rule out the possibility that everyone here had a hand in the murder. Furthermore, are we even sure that a murder took place here? What kind of nonsense are you spouting now? Do you really think anyone here is fooled by your crackpot theories? Inspector Chelmy, I'm beginning to think that the only person here with something to hide is you. That's absurd. This has nothing in the slightest to do with me. I know Inspector has quite a bit to do with this. Meaning? Isn't it obvious? If there is any criminal element involved in this case, then it's a true murder. Or a confirmed one. I've heard you're quite the devoted husband, Inspector. I bet you take very good care of your wife, Amy. Luke and I found this article in the paper. Luke, what was Inspector Chalmy's favourite food again? Crap. Um, sweet potato fritters, I think. A sandwich on buttered bread. It's the sweet potato fritters, anyway. This article specifically states you love sweet potato fritters. And yet you raged poor Matthew when he brought you sweets with tea. Why? And your point is, it just so happens that I have a fondness for Amy's sweet potato fritters. Is that so? Thank you, Inspector. This little conversation has made things quite clear. Please take a look at this. His wife's name's not Amy. I believe you just called them Amy sweet potato fritters, yes? I'd like everyone to look at this article. As you can all see, the article clearly states that Inspector Chalmy's wife is Amelie. Emily? Not Amy. Amelia, maybe? Do you mean to tell me you've forgotten your own wife's name? Grr. Out with it then. Who are you, and why have you been impersonating Inspector Chalmy? Well, that's a, that's a twist. And why have you been running this investigation? Hmm. But your sudden memory loss regarding your wife's name isn't the only suspicious thing about you. Try to recall the time around Simon's death. You said you received a report that prompted you to come to St. Mystia, but you forgot one thing. After Luke and I came to town, the drawbridge near St. Mystia's sole entrance had its crank stolen. This effectively sealed the village. From that point on, no one could enter or leave the village. And do you recall just when this seclusion began? Mm, crap. When did the drawbridge shut down? During our search for Claudia, this morning after we received Inspector's summons. Well, he's trying to say that um, the imposter was already in the town. So he couldn't have been summoned by the inspector, so... I actually can't remember. Claudia's the cat, right? And that happened before Ramon, so search for Claudia. Correct. The only route out of the village had been closed well before Simon's death was discovered. After that event, there was no way that anyone outside the village could enter. By the same token, there was no way to take things out of the village particularly something as large as a corpse. So tell me, Inspector Chalmy, when did you actually first set foot in St. Mustia? 
And furthermore, what did you do with Simon's remains? Grr. Leighton laying down the law here. While we're on the subject, I have one more nagging question that I haven't been able to figure out. How is it that you knew about the key to the tower we discovered? When we happened upon that key, there wasn't a soul in the area, save for Luke and myself. Furthermore, I have spoken of what we found there to no one. There's no conceivable way you could have known about this key. Unless, of course, you were spying on us from the shadows when we picked it up. Now let me see if I've got this all right. You posed as the inspector and used Simon's death as an excuse to enter Reinhold Manor. Since then, you've been waiting for the ideal time to strike and steal the golden apple from us. How am I doing so far? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's so funny? This is no laughing matter. I'm just... I'm just astounded at how despicable I find you, Leighton. But that's exactly why you're worthy of being my arch enemy. I've always despised you, Leighton. I thought I'd be able to crush you once and for all here in St. Mystia. No, this is going to look weird in the layout. But that will have to wait, since you saw through my disguise. You haven't caught on yet, but St. Mystia hides a secret of epic proportions. <laughs> when I imagine a dimwit like you trying to unravel the mystery, I just have to smile. <laughs> my business here for the day has come to an end, so I'll be off now. But listen closely, Leighton. Never forget how close you came to being bested. One day, I, the great Don Paolo, will rain my vengeance down upon you. And on that fearful day, you will beg for an umbrella and a raincoat, perhaps even some galoshes. <laughs> Gosh. Hmm. I guess he's gone. Do you know who that man was? Don Paolo is his name. I've heard stories of him. His grasp of the hard sciences was rumoured to be unrivaled. The problem, as you might guess, was his personality. Though he was a genius, the man was evil. The science board banished him from working officially in his field ever again. Sneaking into St. Mystia to steal the Reinhold fortune sounds like the kind of scheme he would hatch. He seems to hold quite a grudge against you, Professor. What did you do to cross him? I haven't the slightest idea, Luke. Hmm. Well, that aside, what was all that talk of a secret hidden in the village? What was he talking about? I'm mystified by it myself. For the time being, though, let's focus on finding the golden apple, shall we? I say we follow our newest lead and head for that tower. Let's check that dead end from before, Luke. Chapter 8, Solved Tell me solved? Is that it? We've solved one mystery somehow. I'm simply shocked, shocked at this turn of events. Who could have guessed that we had an imposter in our midst? He had me completely fooled. But you saw right through him, Professor. I must say, I'm quite impressed with your cunning. I ask you now to put that brilliant mind of yours to work again and set out in search of the golden apple. It would be my pleasure, madam. By the way, are you feeling alright? You look a bit pale. Hmm... I awoke this morning with memories of a peculiar dream I must have had last night. In it, my husband and I had just had our brand new baby girl, and oh, how everyone fawned over her. 
The next moment, suddenly I was in a park walking hand in hand with my young daughter. With your daughter, you say? Now why would I have a silly dream like that? These past few days have really been quite draining. Hmm. Professor Layton, I, I don't feel particularly well at the moment. I think I will go lie down for a bit. What's wrong with Lady Dahlia? She says she had a dream of walking the park with her young daughter. There's something quite curious about that dream. It's a repressed memory. No, don't mean to bother you. I guess we're headed for the tower. Do you have a another puzzle for me, sir? No, you don't. Alrighty. Off we go. Do you have a puzzle for me? No. What about you, kitty cat? Nope. Which way is the tower? This way? Oh, Agnes, what about you? Do you have a puzzle? It seems that destiny has decided that I show you this puzzle. Will you triumph, or will the gaping maw of fate swallow you whole? Is. I'm sure it's not that serious, Agnes. Puzzle 75, the wire cube. You want to create a cube out of metal wiring using the fewest number of wires possible. You can bend each wire as many times as you like, but no portion of the cube can have more than one length of wire running over the same edge. Don't worry about how one wire will connect to the next, because you'll use a soldering iron later on. What is the fewest number of wires required to complete the task described above? Probably one, then, wouldn't it? No, two. Or something. Let's see. This is difficult to uh, picture, and then like, oh crap. It's probably like three. Think about a corner of a cube and how many lines meet at that point. Three. Three lines meet at each corner on a cube. Imagine a corner where a single wire forms two of the three lines. The final line in this corner must come from the end of a different wire. Therefore, in every corner, at least one of the three lines comes from the end of a wire. So is it two then, somehow? Eight corners to a cube, as discussed earlier, every corner in a cube requires at least one end of a wire. Each wire has two ends, right? Two. Let's try two. No, let's try three then. <laughs> Give it another shot, thanks. Might be four, actually. 
as they were saying, there's eight corners and there's two ends to a, a wire. There we go. Let's see what this looks like. No. Goodness, I can't believe you solved it. It was meant to be. I tell you what, since you went and solved my puzzle, I'll read your palm. Give me your hand now. Hmm, it seems that calamity follows you wherever you go. Try your best to stay out of harm's way. Hmm. You know what, Luke probably wants a globe and Leighton probably wants the map. Let's head on to the tower. I don't remember you. <laughs> I've got a new puzzle for you, dearie. I bet you're just dying to see it, aren't you? I'm sorry, madam, but right now we're in a terrible rush. <laughs> you can't fool this old gal. I've seen you strolling around solving other people's puzzles. And now it's my turn. S seen us? What do you mean? Have you been following us? <laughs> Puzzle 105, rolling a 3. Please don't be probabilities. Yes, you are probabilities, yay. When you roll a die, the chances of rolling a 3 are 1 in 6. The chances of rolling a 3 twice in a row are 1 in 36. And the chances of rolling a 3 three times in a row are jaw-dropping 1 in 216. Let's assume you roll a die 3 times and get a 3 each time. Your chances of rolling a 3 on your next roll are 1 in how many? One in how many? One in six. Nice trick question, though. Terrific. It doesn't matter how many times you roll the same number. If you are only asking about the probability of rolling a three in one turn, the chances will always be one in six. <laughs> You're going to the tower, aren't you, dearie? How about I show you the way? Oh, I was under the impression that the villagers of St. Mystia hated going near the tower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yes, I don't want to go anywhere near that place myself. Though I suppose I could make an exception for a strapping man such as yourself. Oh yes. Um, Professor, we should really keep moving. Her lines are super hard to read because they're not consistent with the lisp. It's a dead end, no two ways about it. Maybe there's another pathway to the tower hidden around here. I'd argue we've come to exactly the right spot, Luke. What do you mean by that? Look right here, Luke. There's a small indentation in the wall where one could place a small object. Oh, so this must be... Yes, this curious indentation is no doubt the spot indicated in Baron Reinhold's note to Archibald. I'm willing to wager that if we put this in there and give it a turn... Wow. Just as I suspected. All right, Luke, in we go. Chapter 9, The Tower's Secret. A path to the tower has been found. Scale the tower and solve all the mysteries of St. Mystia. Yep, the 
Thanks, Gizmo. With that, I do believe we're going to save and call it an episode, so that in the next one we can pick up in the final chapter of Professor Layton in the Curious Village. So I'd like to thank you for joining me for another episode of Professor Layton, and I certainly hope to see you next time.